Hello, and a very warm welcome to everyone joining us for today's Select Science webinar titled Viral Pathogenesis Research, Molecular Detection with RNA Scope. My name is Charlie, and I will be moderating today's presentation as part of our Advances in Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Disease webinar series. I'm delighted to be joined by Jyoti, an Associate Scientist at Advanced Cell Diagnostics, who will be demonstrating how the RNA scope technology can be used to detect viral infection and pathogenesis, and enhance our understanding of globally important viruses. Please feel free to ask your questions for the Q&A session at any time during the webinar. You can submit your question at the left of your screen. Without further delay, I would like to hand over to you, Jyoti. Hello everyone, my name is Jyoti Sheldon. This is an overview of advanced cell diagnostics RNA scope assay for viral detection. For this particular presentation, I'll be going over the RNA scope technology overview. Then we'll move on to discuss some of the applications of RNA scope in infectious disease research. And then we'll talk about the COVID-19 offerings from ACD uh, using RNA scope assay. The RNA scope in situ hybridization technology is a highly specific and sensitive method to detect RNA biomarkers in cells and tissues within the morphological context. It is a hybridization based signal amplification system with a unique probe design that allows for simultaneous signal amplification and background suppression. The technology consists of three parts a unique target probe that ACD designs against your sequence of interest a signal amplification system that generates a high signal to noise ratio, and lastly, visualization of single RNA molecule as punctate dots. The assay allows for the spatial mapping of mRNA, link RNA, splice variants, highly homologous sequences, and point mutations in cell and intact tissues, all of which can be visualized with either fluorescent or chromogenic labels. The assay can be performed on a wide variety of sample tissues, including FFPE tissues, fresh frozen or fixed frozen tissues, PBMCs, and cultured cells. The two key features of the RNA scope technology are probe design and single signal amplification. The oligonucleotide target specific probes are depicted as Zs to emphasize the fact that they have two regions linked by a spacer the bottom of the Z complements and hybridizes to the target transcript, while the top of the Z is the base for the amplification structure. When two Zs hybridize in tandem to the target sequence, it creates a binding site upon which a preamplifier can bind and the amplification tree can build. After the Z pairs hybridize with the target RNA, the preamplifier binds to the top of the ZZ pair. Each preamplifier can bind multiple amplifiers and each amplifier can further bind multiple labeled probes. Labeled probes contain either a chromogenic or a fluorescent enzyme that generates a signal detectable under a standard bright field microscope or fluorescent microscope. This signal amplification strategy yields high sensitivity and allows for visualization of target RNAs as a single dot, where each dot represents an individual RNA molecule that can be quantified. Background is eliminated because the signal is dependent on two Zs binding next to each other on the target sequence. If both Zs do not bind next to each other, then the preamplifier cannot form a stable hybridization and the amplification tree does not get built. Consequently, no amplification of non-specific hybridization occurs, generating little to no background signal. A standard RNA scope probe will consist of 20 Z pairs pulled together that are designed to hybridize next to each other along a target region, allowing for a tremendous amount of amplification at signal potential. However, a minimum of only three Z pairs is needed to bind to the target RNA sequence in order to generate enough signal for molecular detection. Taken together, this combination of probe design and signal amplification ensures a high signal to noise ratio. The RNA scope assay is an ideal assay for viral detections. 
The characteristic features that we saw earlier of this technology enables one to overcome the various challenges and limitations that researchers face in the detection of viruses. First, the context. This in situ hybridization assay that can be used on various sample types such as FFPE, fresh frozen and fixed frozen tissues allows for detection of any target while providing morphological information and viral localization. This can help researchers identify entry portals, replication sites, disease site, and therefore understand viral dynamics. The pre-amplifier and amplifier tree system is built to enable high sensitivity and detection of low viremia. This helps in detecting viruses at the early stages of infection and latent stages that present lower transcripts and that are often present, often present difficulties in detecting these viruses. The patentable Z technology provides high specificity of the assay, and this helps discern closely related viral species. Given the sequence is known, we can design probes for any species. The design process is rapid, which serves as a huge advantage for emerging viruses without available antibodies, such as the new COVID-19 virus or the coronavirus. The probes can be designed single-stranded and can be made strand-specific to discern various viral stages with hybridization to both sense and anti-sense strands to detect replication and resting stages. RNA scope has the ability to detect a wide range of viral species such as DNA viruses, RNA viruses, and retrotranscribing viruses. All of these viruses can be detected as both double-stranded or single-stranded families. Here's a list of some of the viruses that RNAscope has been used to previously detect. Amongst all, one of the new species that we have probes designed for is the V and COVE 2019 virus, or the coronavirus. For today's review, we will be focusing on the group four, or the single-stranded RNA positive strand virus family. The positive single-stranded RNA viruses, some of the examples that we will review are the Zika, the mers virus, the hepatitis virus, and we will give you some specifications for our new coronavirus probe. Here is an example of the use of RNA scope in infectious disease for the early detection of emerging Zika virus. We were able to rapidly generate probes specific for several strains of viruses, and in collaboration with James Bryan at Texas A&M School of Medicine, we were able to detect the strain PRVAB C59, which detects the Puerto Rican agent and Brazilian strain of Zika virus in mouse tissue infected with the virus, but not in uninfected tissues, as you can see on the screen. The lower column shows the DAPI control probe. This publication is from Minor et al. from Washington University, St. Louis, and shows the use of RNA scope in Zika viral detection. Zika virus infection results in severe eye diseases in humans. Minor et al. evaluated the Zika viral eye infection using a mouse model of Zika viral pathogenesis. These mice developed severe eye infections and detected abundant viral RNA in their tears. The mouse model ideal for studying Zika virus induced ocular disease. This is helpful to define mechanisms of viral persistence and develop therapies for viral eye infections. RNA scope in situ hybridization assay detected the Zika virus in the eye, and you can easily see the presence of the virus in corneal layers, optic nerve, bipolar and ganglion layers of the retina. Here is another example from the Oregon Health and Science Universities, where researchers were studying Zika virus in adult rhesus monkeys. Overall, they showed the apparent tropism of the virus for tissues of the peripheral nervous system and reproductive tracts of both male and female. The model provides a platform for development and testing of preventative or therapeutic interventions to combat emergence of Zika virus. The RNA scope ish assay was used to detect Zika viral RNA that persisted in neuronal and lymphoid tissue 28 to 35 days post infection. 
as you can see, there is strong staining of Zika virus in multiple axillary lymph node follicles seen on the right side, 28 days post-infection. Another example, this paper was from the CDC where researchers linked Zika virus to congenital microcephaly and associated this role with pregnancy loss. Mechanisms of Zika virus intrauterine transmission, replication, tropism, and persistence were poorly understood. RNA-scope ish assay was used to localize replicate of Zika viral RNA in brains of infants and placentas of women with pregnancy loss. This is another example by Saparapu from the Vanderbilt University where they isolated a panel of human monoclonal antibodies from subjects previously infected with Zika virus. The Zika virus 117 was one of the most inhibitory antibodies. This paper shows use of RNA-scope in therapeutic studies. RNA-scope is revealed an almost complete absence of viral RNA in the junctional zone and the decidua of the placenta in mice treated with Zika virus 117 antibody. As you can see, the three columns represent the treat, three types of treatment and the presence of the viral RNA using, detected using RNA-scope assay. Moving on to the MERS family, this paper uh, from Hagman's et al. shows the use of RNA-scope in C2 hybridization in detection of the MERS virus. The mers cov virus or infection causes outbreaks in humans fueled by introduction of this virus from the dromedary camels. The researchers show that a viral vaccine MVAS confers mucosal immunity to mers cov in dromedary camels. The ironoscope ish assay demonstrated that fewer cells stained from mers cov RNA in the nose of MVAS vaccinated camels. As you can see, no significant lesions were present compared to the controls. Abundant mers viral RNA was present in epithelium and lamina propria of nasal respiratory tissue of the control vaccinated camels. A comparison was also done for the IHC to detect the mers antigen and for the ish to detect the mers RNA. This is an example for RNA scope to detect the hepatitis A virus. The origins of the human hepatitis A virus are unknown. In this paper, Drexler discovered highly diversified viruses that share unique biological features with HAV in bats, rodents, hedgehogs, and shrews. This is another great example of how knowing the sequence RNA scope can be designed to detect any species with high sensitivity and specificity. RNA-scope in C2 hybridization detected the hepatitis A viral related hepatovirus RNA in bat liver and spleen. HIV related viral RNA was found in bat hepatocytes in large mononuclear cells within the germinal center of the splenic lymphatic nodules. This is a paper from NIH. Until recently, therapeutic eradication of chronic HCV infection has required the use of injectable interferon alpha formulations that are difficult to tolerate and frequently unsuccessful. Interferon-free treatment of HCV infection is now possible with recently developed directly acting antiviral agents or DAAs that inhibit the function of viral proteins such as the NS34A viral protease the NS5B RNA polymerase, and the NS5A non-structural protein. The interferon-free DAA combination therapies for HCV are oral regimens that are favorably tolerated and typically induce rapid and sustained viral suppression in all patients in clinical trials. The interferon-free DAA therapy with sofosbuvir plus ribavirin was given to treatment naive chronic HCV genotype 1 patients. On treatment, they saw viral clearance was accompanied by rapid downregulation of ISGs in liver and blood, regardless of treatment outcome. Analysis of paired pretreatment and end-of-treatment liver biopsies from SVR patients showed 
that viral clearance was accompanied by decreased expression of type 2 and 3 interference, but unexpectedly increased expression of the type 1 interferent A2. RNA scope ish confirmed a downregulation of the interference stimulated genes IFI44 in liver biopsies after directly acting antiviral GAA therapy. Every year, approximately 20 million people are newly infected with HIV worldwide. Among them, 3.4 million patients develop an acute symptomatic infection, and 70,000 people die due to the development of fulminant hepatitis. Furthermore, immunosuppressed patients develop a chronic course of HIV GT3. Four major human pathogenic HIV genotypes have been described. HIV GT1 and 2 are restricted to humans and are mainly transmitted via the fecal-oral route through contaminated drinking water. In contrast, HIV GT3 and 4 are found in humans, pigs, and other mammalian species, leading to sporadic cases of HIV infections in industrialized nations. GT3 and 4 are mainly acquired through zoonotic transmission, through ingestion or contact with infected animals, but transmission through contaminated blood products has also been reported. Therapeutic options are restricted to ribavirin and interferon alpha. In this paper, researcher Allweiss has shown the use of RNA scope to confirm the presence of HIV in infected hepatocytes. Uniform distribution of HIV RNA could be detected in all human hepatocytes, but not in non infected humanized control mouse. Ribavirin treatment of HIV GT1 infected mice showed to decrease intrahepatic HIV RNA. So let's move on to look at the COVID-19 offerings provided by ACD's RNA scope technology. ACD now provides solutions that allow researchers to study the pathogenesis of the virus at various stages. Scientists can detect first the actual virus using probes for COVID-19 in both the sense and anti-sense format, thus detecting both the resting and the replicating stages. Secondly, the virus receptor interaction with probes available for ACE2 and TMPRSS2. Thirdly, the immune response that is mounted as a result of the COVID-19 infection and has been reportedly seen by multiple early publications in the field. And lastly, using our high throughput assays such as Hyplex and Multiplex V2 format, the researchers can now visualize all of these things together to detect presence of the virus, study how it's interacting with the host tissue, and what is the host response to this infection? All this data confirmed on a morphological context at a single cell resolution. Here's the information on the coronavirus probe. The RNA scope probe V ENCOV 2019S, catalog number 848561, is, is available targeting the coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan, China from 2019. The probe was designed to specifically detect the spike S protein of this novel coronavirus. The VNCOV 2019 S probe was designed to avoid cross detections to SARS, MERS, and other coronavirus, Ebola virus, or HIV. The probe can be used in a variety of animal models, including human, mouse, rat, monkey, potential natural hosts, ferret, bat, and etc. The probe can be used to study localization and infiltration of the virus in the tissue. Based on the data that has been published since the emergence of the COVID-19 virus, the given list of RNA scope probes are now made available to customers to study the pathophysiology of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The viral detection probe that target the sense and antisense region of the SARS-CoV-2 sequence, the host cell markers that have shown to be essential and aid in the entry of the virus and facilitate the course of infection, the inflammatory response markers are cytokines that were shown to be infiltrated in the lung tissues of patients with severe form of infection or showed signs of ARDS or acute respiratory disease syndrome. Spatial visualization of these immune markers allow researchers to identify the immune landscape at the site of infection. And finally, the histopathological markers can be used to study the functionality 
and homeostasis of the lung, which is said to be primary organ affected by the onset of the SARS-CoV-2 infection. In addition to using RNA-scope probes to detect COVID-19 in, in the coronavirus research, you can now also combine RNA-scope probes with commercially available antibodies. Examples of some potential combinations are seen on the screen, where you can combine SARS-CoV-2-ish probe with the ACE2 receptor antibody. The growth and adoption of RNA-scope technology is best exemplified by the number of peer-reviewed publications. We had our first publication in 2011, and since, there, since then, there have been over 2,700 peer-reviewed papers published using the RNA-scope technology in numerous journals, including many of the top tier ones. The RNA-scope technology is highly relevant across multiple fields of research, with some of the top areas being neuroscience, cancer, and infectious diseases. Some of the list of papers that use RNA-scope in infectious diseases research is now available on our website. So in summary, we've shown you the utilization of RNA-scope assay in infectious diseases research. Due to the high sensitivity and specificity of this assay, you can utilize your target of interest, the virus, the host, and the immune cell response markers, all of it on the same tissue section at a morphological context and at a single cell resolution. If you would like to get more information on the RNA-scope-ish probe for COVID-19, you can visit our website at www.acdbio.com. If you have any questions about RNA-scope technology or its use in your area of research, please feel free to contact either me at jyoti.fatak at biotechni.com or our support team at support.acd at biotechni.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jyoti, for that incredibly interesting presentation. It's now time for our question and answer session, and we have loads of great questions here already. Uh, so the first one is, is the COVID-19 probe specific to this specific virus, or can it detect other SARS species? Uh, thank you so much for that question. So um, this particular, the COVID-19 probe has been specifically designed for the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus that had the outbreak in Wuhan, China in 2019, and it detects the S protein of that particular virus. So uh, it will not detect the other SARS species, but we do have probes that will allow detection of the other uh, different SARS species that, that have been previously studied. Great, thank you. Um, another person has asked, how many targets can be tested in a single sample for either of the chromogenic and fluorescent formats? So for the chromogenic format, we can detect either a single plex for, uh, in a single plex format or a duplex format. For the fluorescent assay, you can do uh, up to four targets using our multiplex V1 or V2 format. But if you have access to fixed frozen or fresh frozen tissue, then you can also do detection of up to 12 targets on the same tissue section using our Hyplex assay. But you can also find a lot of these additional details on our product uh, page on our website. Great, thank you. Um, someone has asked the question, do you have any data or papers that have used RNA scopes for COVID-19 viral detection in human samples? Oh yeah, uh, thanks for that question. So um, we actually have a lot of papers that have come out. They are currently uh, in preprint in the bio archive, but uh, we have a paper that is in kidney reports by Arcana Labs, uh, and they have tested out the SARS-CoV-2 probe in kidney uh, biopsy tissues. We also have some researchers that are testing this probe out in human liver samples. In addition, there are two other papers that, that have come out. One of them tested the SARS-CoV-2 probe in uh, cell lines that were positive for the virus, as well as a paper. the first paper that had come out tested the probe in three non-human primate species. Uh, details on all of these papers are available on our website under the COVID-19 page. 
So if you would like to take a look at any of them, feel free to uh, look at the web page and, and uh, view the papers through the given links. Excellent. Um, so somebody has also asked if you could elaborate on uh, something. So they've said in the COVID-19 offering, there was information on doing ISH and IHC together. Could you give us a bit more detail on that? Yeah, so you can perform RNA scope along with uh, immunohistochemistry or immunofluorescence. The way the protocol works is you perform the IHC or the IF after doing your RNA scope. And our support team will help you out in determining, uh, you know, if, how the antibody will work or the pretreatment conditions can, it will, that will need to be optimized for running the antibody. So some of the recommendations for it, especially the, the COVID-19 virus that we've made, is you can test the viral probe in the RNA, using the RNA scope assay, along with maybe the antibody for the receptors such as ACE2 or TMPRS. So th those are just some of the recommendations that we've made. But of course, you can always add your antibody of choice using the RNA scope uh, ish probe. Great, thank you for that. Um, we've got another question that is, what tissue types can be used for viral detection using the RNA scope assay? So depending on the different formats, either chromogenic, fluorescent, or the different product types, uh, you can either use FFPE, fixed frozen, fresh frozen tissue samples. We've also done some uh, work where people have used cell lines, as I mentioned before, cell pellets. So it, it really depends on the platform that you're using, but the three standard tissue types uh, compatible are FFPE, fixed frozen, and fresh frozen tissue samples. Lovely, thank you. Um, one more question here that says, do you have probes available to study pathogenesis models in different species? Yeah, uh, definitely. So the, the probes are not just restricted to the actual viral gene. You can also design probes for, very, for detecting like various stages of the pathogenesis, uh, as shown on the slide on the presentation, along with using the SARS-CoV-2 probe, you can also add the probes to IL-6 or some of these cytokine uh, factors that are released as a response to the infection. And that way you're really allowed to see the entire breadth of how the infection affects the, uh, the host tissue. Uh, you can also use the negative uh, scent strand probe that will allow you to detect the viral replicating site on the, on the tissue that you're, that you're testing out. So we have one question here, and they're wondering what are the pros and cons of using RNA scope in the detection of viral infections like COVID over techniques such as qPCR? That's a great question. So to clarify, qPCR is a is a completely different platform than COVID. They're serving two different purposes. Uh, sorry, than RNA scope. qPCR is a faster detection method for things like diagnostic tests, as you're seeing out there in the market right now. The RNA scope in C2 hybridization assay is very specific for tissue-based detection. So if you want to look at your targets on the tissue and understand how the how the virus is actually causing the infection and, and look at the spatial context, that's where the RNA scoping C2 hybridization comes in. We've also had a number number of papers where customers have done qPCR before and then confirmed their qPCR findings on a tissue context using the RNA scope assay for, for their target of interest. So they both are complementary to each other in, in a lot of ways. Great, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, someone has also asked, does fixation and permeabilization affect detection efficiency of this technique? So we do recommend some protocols for fixation and permeabilization, but if you already have samples that have been fixed, uh, our protocol does ask you to test out uh, controls just to make sure your FFP sample, the RNA quality in your FFP sample is good. And if the controls uh, come back great, then you can of course go ahead and proceed with your, uh, with running the assay. Excellent. Um, so someone has asked if you could clarify what the exact meaning of RNA scope ish is. <laughs> sure. So RNA scope in C2 hybridization assay is basically in a nutshell what you're doing is if you have a target of interest that you're you want to look at 
on, on your a tissue sample. You will ask us to design a probe for that target of interest. And then that probe will hybridize to the target on, on whatever tissue type you're using. And the signal using our patented signal amplification technology will allow you to visualize those targets as a single dot. Uh, and so you're, you're looking at your data at a single cell resolution. So in a nutshell, that's a very uh, like a broad question. But in a nutshell, it's an in situ hybridization assay, a tissue-based assay, allowing you to visualize uh, dots at, with high sensitivity and high specificity at a single cell resolution. Lovely, thank you, Jyoti. Um, so we've got a question here if, um, from a couple of members of the audience, actually, and they're wondering um, if these slides will be made available to them at the end of the event. Yes, so uh, the slides are currently available as a video format on YouTube, but uh, from what I've been told, Select Sciences will also be uh, allowing you to watch this on demand down the road. Uh, and a member of our marketing team will also follow up uh, and will make this this deck available to anybody that, that needs it down the road. So, yeah. Excellent. Um, so another question on the RNA scope now. Um, what is the sensitivity and specificity? So for the sensitivity and specificity, like I mentioned before in the design of the probe, uh, the probe is, needs to bind to both disease, right? So that's the thing that's really allowing you to improve your specificity. Just binding of one of disease will not allow for that amplification tree to be built out. You need both disease to combine together, bind on your target probe for that amplification tree to be built. So that allows that increased specificity. And those multiple amplifiers and preamplifiers combining onto that tree allows for that increased signal and allowing you with a better sensitivity of the assay. <clears throat> great, thank you. That was great. Um, someone has asked, can you use RNA scope on the nasal swab specimen? Um, you probably, I will have to check with my support team and get back on that. I don't have, I don't know. So I know it's a tissue-based assay and you can use it on FFP, fixed frozen or fresh frozen samples. For nasal samples, you'll have to contact the support team and see how that test can be made available on that specific specimen. Excellent. Thank you for that information. And um, someone has asked, what is the turnaround time for results? Sorry, I was put. I put myself on mute. I could, I didn't realize. So the turnaround time for a manual chromogenic assay is usually about eight hours, uh, and then it can be divided up to two days if you prefer. There's multiple stopping points that that you can use. Uh, if you're using the fluorescent version of the assay, the the time really varies depending on which version you're using. Uh, the fluorescent V1 assay can take um, you know as little as six hours. Um, and the automated assays, uh, we have the, we are, uh, we can do the assays both on the Ventana and the Leica platforms, and they can take about 12 hours to, uh, to perform. Great, thank you. Um, someone is wondering, are there probes for enteric viruses as well? Yes, we have probes for all viruses available. The data today was shown in, you know, as a response to all the pandemic right now, but you can design probes to any virus any species out there. Uh, and as long as you know the sequence, we can design a probe for you. Lovely. Um, and someone is wondering, can two types of RNA scope be used simultaneously to detect patients that may have been infect infected by both viruses at the same time? So this is referencing uh, influenza virus um, as well as the COVID-19 probe. Absolutely, yeah, you can definitely detect uh, two different viral species on the same tissue sample. Uh, you can use either the duplex assay or you can also perform the multiplex fluorescent assay. Uh, in terms of like other, uh, you know, if you want to detect similar types of species, you will have to look at the homogeneity of the sequence and uh, consult with our probe design team. Uh, but as long as the two sequences have a good amount of difference, you can detect both of those uh, probes on the same tissue context. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, someone is asking about tissue preparation, and they asked which tissue specimens are preferred for in situ hybridization, and are there any special um, fixation requirements? 
is similar to the question uh, that was asked before. We have a standard format for FFPE, fresh frozen, fixed frozen samples. Uh, for fixation, we do provide recommendations in our protocols on how to do those. And when you purchase the assay, our support team will help you out with, with the process. If you already have samples that have been fixed, fixed in the past, uh, you can also run, you will also be running the controls regardless of, of whatever you do to check the RNA quality in your sample and, and deciding if the sample is good enough to be tested or not. Great, thank you for clarifying that. Um, someone has also asked, how is the sequence on double Z target probes determined? So the double Z target probes are will hybridize your target of interest. It's determined by you. You provide the sequence to our probe design team. Uh, they will run their algorithm to make sure uh, to test for the feasibility of the probe, you know, check for variable factors like cross detection and things as such. Uh, and then the probe is designed, and that's the one that will hybridize to both disease together. Uh, our standard probe is a 20ZZ probe. Uh, you don't need all the 20ZZs to bind to your target, as I mentioned in the schematics on the presentation, um, uh, for the signal amplification to happen. But it, the, to answer the question again, it will determine on the sequence that you've provided for us to design the probes for. Great. Um, our next question is, what is the difference in the application of negative sense and positive sense RNA scope? That's a great question. Uh, so the positive sense RNA scope probe is the one that will allow you to detect the actual viral gene, uh, while the negative sense probe will allow you to visualize the viral replicating strand. And so you can identify uh, if the virus is present or not, but also you can see where's the replicating site on a tissue context. And that's somewhere where in situ hybridization is really helpful because it will allow you to, to get all that data on the morphological space uh, while confirming and validating the, the presence of the infection or not. <clears throat> Lovely, thank you very much for that. Um, someone is saying thank you for the wonderful presentation. And um, their question is, is, can they use the RNA scope to detect hepatitis B? Uh, yeah, definitely. We I've shown some examples in the in the deck, and you can always revisit them. We've had multiple publications that have used RNA scope for detection of uh, of Hep B virus. So yeah, you can absolutely uh, perform the assay for that. Great. Um, someone has asked, can the RNA scope be designed as a general probe for different coronaviruses rather than being specific for just one? Yes, you can design a probe that will allow you to detect the different various SARS species as opposed to the specific SARS-CoV-2. Uh, you can talk to the probe design team. Uh, and I, I believe you, you may be able to check it on the website, but we may already have a probe existing that will allow you to detect the, the broader umbrella of the SARS species. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Um, so the next question is, is the RNA scope available in kit form? Yes, the RNA scope kit is available in, uh, is available in a kit form. Uh, what you basically get in the kit are the reagents, uh, the buffers, the probes uh, that are required to perform the protocol. There are some uh, materials that you will need to purchase on your own depending on uh, what assay you're performing. Uh, and also you'll need your uh, scanners, your microscopes. Uh, the Protocol also requires you to have a hybridization oven, and that's something that can be purchased from uh, ACD as well. Great, thank you very much for that. Um, so I think we've got time for one more question here, and that is, can this kit differentiate between very virulent COVID-19 and a less virulent strain? Um, so it, I would believe the virulency would depend on the level of gene expression. So yes, if you're looking at it on a morphological context, you will be able to determine the the level of the COVID the SARS-CoV-2 gene expression in your tissue. Uh, and and you, like I said, this is a semi-quantitative assay, so you can count the number of dots that are represented by the by the amount of uh, virus that is present in the in the sample. So you can you can quantify and, and determine based on that. 
Great, thank you very much. Um, actually, we do have uh, another question that's come through uh, saying, how should we store the RNA scope? Uh, the RNA scope kit has multiple reagents in it, so each uh, reagent will have its own um, specification for, for storage. So when you purchase the kit, you, can, uh, you will get all those recommendations with it, and uh, you can al always contact our support team uh, to, to find out what is the ideal storage for each of those uh, reagents received. That's great. Thank you very much, Jyoti. Um, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Uh, so thanks again to Jyoti for today's informative presentation. And thank you to everyone joining us online. Uh, if you do have any other questions, and I do see a few coming in now, um, but please feel free to email me at editor at selectscience.net, and I will follow these up with Jyoti. Um, remember, you can also download a certificate of attendance in the Related Resources tab uh, at the bottom left of your screen. If you would like to listen again to today's webinar or invite a friend to listen at a later date, it will be available to watch on demand in a few days' time. Uh, goodbye and thank you once again for joining us.